Good morning, folks. This morning, Japan has joined Greece as a seismic uptick zone. We're starting today with Stellarium to see what's visible where. If you're up at my hours, you can see Saturn and Mars in the pre-dawn sky. If you get out a bit closer to sunrise, you might catch Venus doing her morning star routine after being in evening splendor for months. If you're like most people, I know you prefer your dark skies to be in the evening time. You don't even need to wait for all the color to leave the sky to catch a glimpse of Orion's house party. Zeus showed up. Moon brought a keg. I was taking a gander last night before going to bed. Anyone remember back when it was discovered that those who only watched The Daily Show and Colbert Report were better informed about worldwide facts than those who only watched the quote, real news? I remember it fondly, and it appears the sentiments continue. Not only are people labeled as conspiranuts beginning to outnumber those who buy into government propaganda, but the conspiracy folk appear to be calmer, more fact-driven, more often citing their statistics and less likely to get angry. I'm actually not sure about that last part, but it appears the tide is turning, a shifting face of discourse. That's a pretty good segue into the climate. Please, Stephen, return my message, buddy. We all remember the excuse they used to give us about how fast the land warmed compared to the ocean. Well, unless you just showed up today, you know they've now flipped it around to say it's the ocean gaining the heat that should have been on land. It's their excuse for no global warming for over a decade. Well, the ESA has gone back to that propaganda today, so if you see those stories about the ocean heat and climate, remember what NASA, Johns Hopkins, and their Israeli collaborators said about ocean heat actually causing cooling. This was a key topic on Saturday's audio discussion as well. So even if my arguments go away, and even if they were wrong before about the ocean heat, their new story is still going to result in cooling. South America. We have moisture entering at the northeast and the east. It lingers on that side of the Andes, builds, then drops. The entire northern portion of the continent may see rain today, often heavy. Coming north, we see one convergence line in the southern states, barely visible. And again, we have the reinforcing pressure shooting moisture at the coastline where high and low pressure meet. The west is in for another day like yesterday, but the southeast U.S. may want to consider some time inside. Ice could shut down some cities today. A lot of warnings flying in Europe, but in a broad sense, much like the west coast of the Americas with massive moisture rather than confined storms. Northern lows reinforcing the drive of a southern high, both shift air and moisture over the continent and causing widespread dump rather than convergence lines. Perhaps the top watch today is for the northwest Australian coastline. The wind and precipitable water reveal the strong pressure concentration of storm power there. All night and into tomorrow, guys. Heads up. And to note, it is predicted that all tropical development on our planet will remain in this area for some time. Yesterday afternoon, the sun began pop locking and dropping it, starting with a tiny earth-directed filament release followed by a not-so-tiny CME on the limb resulting from an M-class solar flare. Last night you saw me tell you that the ejecta was heading this way, but this morning it appears NASA's endless spiral is just concentrating on that one limb eruption, ignoring the filament pop completely. Cactus update? Point goes to SO, as all of you should be able to see the bit of ejecta heading to the right. That means we do have a halo and there will be Earth impact, albeit small due to the size of the filament. Meanwhile, we appear to be catching a tremendously weak coronal hole stream. Remember, we look for a rise in speed after the density drops off. Both are kind of eh right now, and we have no instability to speak of. Low instability on the sun as well. Other than the M1, we've not really had any flaring. Departing groups carrying the magnetic connection between Earth and Sun just behind the spots themselves. Incoming groups are the focus now. I see multiple places where blue and red umbras are potentially interactive in a close penumbral environment. We do need another day to diagnose the limb. Orange umbral fields here atop the incoming spots. Behind those comes another northern coronal hole looking dark in front of that releasing filament, which is not going to be of any concern. Lastly, let's come to the website briefly and look to the videos button. The first link is to the climate series, three episodes down so far, and if you haven't seen them, might be a good moment. Climate number four is less than a week away. Eyes open. No fear at 6.30 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.